back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we have a very hot one in store for you. We're doing how to forgive after cheating, okay? And to join me in the G-spot, that is guest spotlight, I have two of my favorite clients, one of my favorite couples in the world, Leanne V. She's an artist, content creator, entrepreneur, and fiance of Don Benjamin. And then I have Don Benjamin himself. He is an actor, executive producer, model, and best-selling author of My Truth. And he is fiance of Leanne V. Welcome to the show, you guys. <laughs> I see you guys every week in our sessions. <laughs> it's so amazing to be here to see you in person. Like, I'm so excited. Yes, we are thriving, right? Because we've had to have so much social distancing yeah. with COVID and everything that I'm happy that you know we're all healthy, living our best lives right now, and that I was able to bring you guys in for this very personal interview. You guys have been fully transparent with me. I want you guys now fully transparent with the world. You guys have been really good about always being your authentic self and telling your truth, but there's some deeper questions that we're gonna dive into today that I think are really gonna help people have a clear understanding of what it takes to heal and do the work of coming back from some challenges in a relationship, especially Definitely. the ones that you guys are gonna get into yeah. that you experienced. So to warm you up, like I always do on my Spicy Life <laughs> podcast, you're gonna share with us when you first fell in love with yourself. Leanne, you're gonna go first, and then Don, you're gonna go second. So I feel that I've always loved myself, but to truly know when I first fell in love myself, I believe it really happened when me and Don broke up because it allowed me to really reflect and realize, okay, I don't know what I'm doing with my life to keep attracting this kind of energy or going through these situations, but I know that there's something that I'm lacking that maybe throughout our relationship with me and Don, I ended up being so invested in me and Don, me and Don, me and Don, that I was losing myself. And sometimes you don't realize that until you finally part ways and then you're by yourself. Like, you know what? I wasn't truly happy with myself. I feel like certain things that me and Don's... Um, experiences brought up a side of me that I didn't feel that I was happy with and really focusing on myself and understanding okay I need to make myself whole I need to focus on my happiness my peace stop trying to please everyone in my family and my friends and you know just really starting to refocus and shift my mindset to understanding what I truly need and want yeah. and I think that's when I really found out like my true love for myself because I did my homework. I was researching and trying to also separate myself from everyone's opinions. Like it was just so much going through this breakup and I felt that I truly focused on self-love at that point. So I think that's when I could say I fell in love with myself. That's beautiful. I think a lot of people can relate to falling in love or giving your heart to someone before you've fully fallen in love with yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you're doing it, doesn't matter when, as long as you're doing yes, it. Yes, <laughs> no, for sure. And my parents have always shown a really great example of love and loving yourself but I felt like sometimes you have to experience things to realize okay you know what I need to do better and what is self-love yeah you know people think oh I love myself I love myself but what, what is really loving yeah. yourself so I really dug deep and understood the true meaning of just self-love so. beautiful okay this next spice breaker is for Don you're gonna tell us when you fell in love with yourself uh I mean the funny thing is I think when we split up as well like I always loved myself I always had confidence but I didn't realize like the broken elements within myself until we broke up. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, you know, there was different things that I was doing where I'd be mad at myself or regret. And once I started to fully work on myself when we split up was when I was like feeling the true healing come to be and feeling these, these new powers within myself. And I was like, I was like, wow, I'm really, I'm really in touch with who I want to be yeah. and I'm really starting to fully love myself and accept mm -hmm. myself and know that I'm kind of I put like a checklist together of all these things that I see in myself and who I want to be and I was like I could finally go down this checklist and confidently say like I'm hitting all these boxes you know so I guess our split up really like brought the best out of both of us. You know? Yay to the breakup. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Sometimes it's necessary. Uh, I know. It's sometimes not easy. sometimes it's necessary, it hurts. right? It hurts. Sometimes it's necessary. Um, I am going to deep dive into some very touchy personal questions that of course things that you guys have revealed to me, but I'm going to let you give your testimony. Mm -hmm. But on this episode on, you know, how to recover, how to heal, how to forgive after cheating, 
Um, there's some takeaways that I want you guys to have in advance. I want you as an audience, right? Because I always speak to my audience. I want you guys to have a clear understanding that what you see in front of you was not magic. It didn't happen overnight. It's not a facade of this perfect couple. They have had real challenges, real traumatic experiences, real agony, um, and have had to pull themselves back up to this place of love. So the things that I want you guys to be aware of that you're listening to and paying attention to are these four steps while they're talking. I'm gonna take them through a series of questions, but you guys are gonna pay attention to these four things, okay? The remorse that you hear in their testimony, the rebuilding of trust that you hear them experience, the tackling deep-rooted issues, and forgiveness, okay? Those are the four things. So I'm gonna repeat it again. Remorse, rebuilding trust, tackling deep-rooted issues, and forgiveness. If you can't do those four things, Y'all don't need to be together. <laughs> I'm going to just say this right now. I have witnessed them do it. They have done the work. <laughs> so don't take this as a cheat sheet. Take this as, hmm, are me and my partner capable of doing these things? And is it worth it for us to try to make it work or come back together and, and rebuild this bond in this relationship? Okay. So I uh, have to preface it with that because people will think that we're condoning infidelity mm -hmm. and infidelity is never spicy. That is not what we are saying. You guys put in the time, the energy, the resources, the expertise, the work, the application. And I've seen it. I've witnessed it. Now you guys are going to share the story. So we're going to start with you, Leanne, you're going to tell us why you guys originally fell for one another. What was it that you originally loved about Don and Don loved about you? You know, the connection that me and Don share, we were friends for three years before, and I feel like this particular person in my life, we had so much in common. We shared the same beliefs. We had the same morals with family. And when you have that connection, it's so hard to explain what that is. It's more of a feeling. And just also as a woman, you know, you want someone that is going to also be your other half. And Don, I feel like when we're together, it just seemed right. Yeah. I felt like we connected, everything was running smoothly and it didn't feel forced. And again, we were friends for three years before. So it just felt perfect, you know? And I just feel like I fell in love with his heart when, you know, his relationship with his mom and how he, his, um, you know, outlook on life. I was just very intrigued with just everything about him. He just seemed like such an amazing person. And I was interested, like, you know, I would love to see where this goes. and. You know, it just pretty much started as a friendship. And I think that's the, the most important part for me is if I can connect with you on a friendship level, like that's forever. I feel like a friendship so is so important. Don, why did you fall in love with Leanne? What was it about her other than the fact that she is gorgeous? I mean, besides the, <laughs> the gorgeousness and the beauty. Um, and his eyes. <laughs> I think just, you know, I think just um, her, I seen her in church long before we even became friends. So I already knew she like, believed in God and she was a woman of faith and then uh like her innocent or her her innocentness mm. she was innocent like she didn't drink she didn't want she wasn't worried about being out in the clubs like she was all about family and friends and I feel like it's really hard to find that especially in LA but I feel like it's hard to find that in general like yeah. someone that doesn't want to be out here in these streets she hasn't been you know, all around town and, and <laughs> oh, uh, you he know, she, ran through. <laughs> yeah, you know, she, she has not been this ran spicy, through, we can say it. you know, <laughs> you know, and so, so for me, it was just a lot of these things where I was like, she's just a really good girl, good heart. Um, she always puts people above herself and her feelings. And, and, you know, I was just like, whenever I would be out of town or working, I would always be thinking about Leanne. I would always be wondering what she's doing. And we'd always end up reconnecting some way, somehow. And like she said, it was just natural. Like yeah. our friendship was natural and the connection was natural. I felt like it was easy flowing. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Everybody wants that, right? Mm -hmm. I love that you pointed out um, that you saw purity within her. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna shift this a little bit. There was some, not so, so many things that were pure about you though. You were going through yeah, some things. Right. Leanne, you're gonna share with us a little bit about Don's lack of purity, um, <laughs> why you called up the engagement. Like, we want the details. We want to know, you don't have to give us the long-winded story because I could go into yeah. labor any day. Um, <laughs> but give us the abbreviated version of what happened because we got to see a public engagement. You guys are extreme influencers and people were aware, uh, well aware of your guys' love and relationship. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we were like, what happened to Don and Leanne? Right. What happened? 
So, do you want me to talk about what happened? Happened, yeah, like what, the details of everything, yeah, pretty us, much the juicy know, details. You know, like every single snippet, like you know, of why we but, called it off. Yeah, give me the outline of why you called off the engagement. So, to be really honest, um, through our relationship from the beginning, like of course, when I met Don, we did have this amazing connection, and everything about him was just amazing. But then, of course, he's coming from a lifestyle of. Going to the clubs, he was performing. He's an artist. He's performing at these clubs, drinking, and I knew, of course, like okay, this is how I know I didn't love myself the way I love myself now because I would never have tolerated a lot of things that I did. Um, but you know, we we love that challenge. Like as women, we're like, ooh, he looks like a problem. Let me fix it. Yeah. Like, and I've just learned so much. <laughs> like I can change him. I can turn that hot boy and out. no, let me tell you, you don't want to do that because sometimes as women we like the challenge, we like the chase, but it is not the smartest thing because you will end up heartbroken because when you're invested in someone that is not whole, and I know that I wasn't completely whole at the time either, that's how I was attracting that. When I wasn't whole, I wasn't attracting other people that weren't whole. And looking back at that person, like, oh my God, I, you know, I've experienced so much, but I've learned so much along the way, which I am very grateful for. But knowing that I was getting into a situation with Don, I knew it was going to be a challenge. And I knew that there were things that of course, as women, we have these little insecurities like, okay, is he going to be faithful? Um, you know, is, is he going to break my trust? And can I really trust him when he's traveling and performing and being around these beautiful women? He's also a model. He's other beautiful models. All these things can come into play. But at the same time, I'm a very confident woman. But a lot of it doesn't happen because of me. I could be amazing, but I'll never be good enough for a man that's not ready. So I knew that at that point when Don was doing his thing. And I think also I've seen a shift because me and him have been together for like over like almost five, six years now. But through the years, there has hap there has been things that had happened in his life. He lost his dad. He lost his dog and things were shifting. His career was up and down. And just seeing Don grow as, you know, a young man to becoming a mature man, like I seen the growth. And also it's scary because I'm growing too. And and trying to understand, okay, like, do I see him as my husband? I can see us getting married. But then we're going through all these tests and challenges. And, you know, I had an insecurity and I'm still going through this healing. But I always, like, was afraid, like, okay, is he really the one? How can I really know? What, what will allow me to feel at peace knowing that he can be the one for me? And then when he proposed to me, um, there were already insecurities there because of like the lifestyle he was living i don't think that he had really shifted his life yet mm -hmm. um i feel that he's done the whole i'm committed to you i'm not sleeping with anyone else this is you and me but at the same time he didn't change his lifestyle he was still going to the clubs with his boys he was still entertaining girls that were just his friends supposedly like whatever it was it just did not change it's been the same and it took a real breakup like this for him to grow but when he proposed to me I'm like, okay, I guess this is it. Like, it's normal to feel a little unsure. Yeah. I talked to some of my friends that were proposed to. They said, you know, you get these feelings sometimes and it's completely normal. And I'm like, I do. Like, I, I, don't, I don't see myself with anyone else. And I, I love you. And I feel that this can work. We can really be happy together. But then I still have these insecurities. And then, of course, us women, our intuition is so strong. So when you feel something, something it's hard to, like even push it aside because even if you come, if you talk to your significant other and ask them they're so defensive like I'm not doing nothing all this and then you don't want to look like an insecure girlfriend all these things can happen but you need the proof or you need some kind of explanation to have um, this com conversation and then you know I felt this intuition in my stomach I want to go through his Apple Watch so I went through his Apple Watch because it was connected to his phone. He happened to leave town and I read some messages. You know, this was more of like a not physical cheat. This was a planning cheat. But I don't care what kind of planning or physical. It's cheat no matter what. Right. If you're planning or entertaining somebody, it's cheating to me. And so right when I found out, I FaceTimed Don and he looked at me. He already knew, like, my face. I was just like, and I found out with my girls there. They were staying oh, at wow. my house. So I, like, woke them up. I'm yeah. like, it's over. It's <laughs> over. I'm done. And they were like, what the hell is going on? Because this was, like, at 1 in the morning when I just was, everyone fell asleep. But I was awake just thinking, you know. And I went, that's when I went upstairs and saw the messages. And I was telling my friends, it's over. They all helped me pack his bags. Oh, and, wow. like, Strictly I was just, like, oh, 
oh, it's over. Packed. All of it was packed. <laughs> and like, my friends were confused half asleep. Like, I don't know what's going on, but okay, Leanne, like we're doing this with you. And that's another thing I'm so grateful for my friends because they've been there for me through so much yeah. and they really supported me and Don's relationship. So it was also heartbreaking for them to find out. And I FaceTimed Don. And I told him that it was over, like, and he was confused and he didn't know like how, what, when, like, what did you do to know what's going on? And then he admitted. And then after that, like I said, you know, once you get home, your bags are packed. You need to come home and pick up everything. Um, and he said, like, of course, he was begging and wanting to explain and have, like, a conversation with the family because I pretty much just cut it off. I said, nope, I don't even want to talk about it. When you get here, just leave. So there was a line. There was. It. Yeah. So it was not a, well, let me hear him out and stay with him and see if No, no. It was an automatic, this is... This it's a line. deal breaker for done me. Like, I feel like infidelity, even in the Bible, like, that's a time where... You can say, like, I'm, you know, we're not together anymore. If you cheat on me and I'm, there's someone else, like, I, it's, I could never see myself getting back with someone that cheated on me. And I used to think that even, like, before this happened, like, oh, I could never get back with someone. I don't know how she's doing it or I don't see how I can heal from this. This isn't possible. I could never trust you again. So I understand when people say these things, like, you know, once a cheater, always a cheater. How can you trust this person? You know, you're an idiot for even getting back with him. He's going to do it again. Like, all of these things. But I knew that I had to separate myself because it was just, that was it. It was the deal breaker for me and then we broke up. And most people would be afraid because you guys were engaged. Right. So you guys were engaged and living together. Yeah. yeah. So these are like high stakes. It's not like, okay, I'm just not going to answer his calls anymore. You actually had to move him out of the house, like <laughs> call oh up God, the it engagement. Was, you know what's funny, Don <laughs> would like, hey, I left um, my sock over there. Can I come? Which like, no, no, Don, you can't come over. <laughs> and you know what's interesting? Like I, he did have some things lingering that I couldn't take or me and my friends could pack for him. So um, I would leave the house and schedule like, okay, my mom's gonna be there. You can go ahead and pick up the rest of the stuff and then they'll let me know when you're gone. So I tried to make sure I had no contact, nothing at all. And I even threatened him like, cause he's tried to pop up, you know, and give gifts. And I'm like, you do this again, I'm calling the cops. Oh wow. And I'm so, so serious. you were serious, okay. Like, <laughs> so we're gonna go a little bit deeper. Who, did Don cheat with and why? You don't have to give us a name, okay. but was it a cousin, a family friend? Was it one of these random bottle popping chicks at the club? Like, yeah. who did Don cheat with? So this happened to be Don's friend. Mm -hmm. One of his only girlfriends, mm -hmm. not girlfriend, but a friend that's a girl. And you know, us women, I feel that you can always feel and sense if a woman's motive can be unpure mm -hmm. or they have ulterior motives, whatever it is. And Don has always talked about this particular friend being a really good friend of his that's for a friend that's been there for years. So I'm thinking, okay, well, if this person's a best friend, why haven't I met her? You know, you've met all my friends. I haven't met her on a birthday, holiday, nothing. Okay, so there were signs. Yeah. Okay. So, and I noticed whenever I would leave town, he happens to go on a sushi lunch with her mm. or visit her store because she has a little boutique store that um, she has. And like, they were just like, it was always a, oh, it's just my friend that we just caught up real quick. So every time I would leave town, I noticed that they would grab lunch. Yeah. And so it made me feel uncomfortable because some of the times I would find out through other people. And being such a public couple, everyone's watching. And yeah. I feel like everyone's always wanting someone to mess up to just for the drama. And I've gotten calls like, hey, I just saw Don having lunch with this person. So I would call him and he's like, oh, I was going to tell you. I'm like, were you really going to tell me? So I felt like I was already threatened by that. Yeah. And, you know, it was a friend. And actually, Don has set up dinners where we have met. And she's been around for little occasions now, for like my birthday. And I even uh, attended one of her launch parties just by myself because Don was available. And I was trying. So when I know if there's a woman, in his life, mm -hmm. I want, if that's your friend, I'm gonna make her my friend too, cause I'm gonna keep her close. That's a spicy tip right on? there. <laughs> you should be be befriending the friend of your I, lover, like, if you're always. Be your best friend, you're my best friend. Look, like, like, they love you. I need to figure out what makes you so lovable. Why, why do they love you? Let me find out. <laughs> it's not my friend and it's your friend. I just wanna know, cause it was just interesting to me how it was your, you know, someone that you say is close to you and I would never met her before, but through the years, you know, she was just always that one girl that I would just question. 
And, you know, they would text sometimes late at night just talking about work because I guess he had helped, she had helped him with like his website before. So she has worked with Don in the past. That's okay. how they met. Have they, were they intimate in the past? Was this a friend? That's that one thing that I intimate? saw in the text messages that they went down memory lane. And that's when I knew, oh my God, they really have history. So I'm, I, we, we had history, but I had never totally. Yeah. And I asked him before so and he did, he lied to me. Up, yeah. Okay, let the record Yeah, break. I lied. I never, I said that Don't we never did anything. Yeah, lied okay. about the history. And I can tell that, I can tell that they had something, but I just couldn't, it's like hard to tell because Don is such a kind person, but I could tell the girl had some kind of interest, but a lot of girls, you know, have interest in Don. He's a beautiful person and, you know, good looking guy, but then just her being so close to you as a friend and you guys worked together in the past, that's when I questioned him. I said, did you guys ever have anything? And he said, no, because he wanted to still keep that friendship. Right. And I do believe that there were boundaries in the beginning, like when she started coming around because she was in a relationship at the time. And when she went through her breakup and then all of a sudden she's been more like, every now blue moon texting Don or Don texting her. So then I'm like, you know, what's going on? So I've always just questioned it. Um, and then that's when I pretty much knew what it was when I went through his Apple Watch and I saw like the memory lane of what they've done together and planning to do like, and that's when it was over. Okay, so you saw signs and you had intuition, you went looking for evidence and you received that. And I also noticed that he would reach out to her when I'm busy mm -hmm. and he's at home. There was and, inappropriate behavior going yeah, on. There right. was definitely evidence of that. Yeah. What the world wants to know is, Don, what were you thinking and why? Why would you cheat on someone as fabulous as you just described in the beginning of my first question of how you fell in love with her? Why? Why did you do it? And so when I went searching for like why, it's never, it never has nothing to do with the woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes there may be, you know, you may be in a relationship and there's no sex or there may be something, but in my circumstances, it had nothing to do with Leanne. It was something that, it was a pattern, a habit. Like my entire life, this was all I seen from my father. You know what I'm saying? All the men pretty much in my life, like they painted the picture, like as long as you're good to your woman and you're here, if you're flirting, you're not sleeping with her, you're flirting, you can see what you can get away with. Like it was always negative annotations on what a man what a man can get away with, and for me, I had cheated in pre present relationships. You know, like if I I would do some things and then I'd be like, well, all right, I did that, I fucked up, but let me be good to my girl yeah. and just focus on us. And so I think in this situation, like in my mind with her, like we hooked up, but we did ultimately have a friendship, me and the girl. But there was still, like, looking back at it, there's still always that tiptoe of if I used to flirt with her, maybe I can see what I could get away with, you know? And then in that moment um, when we were talking and we were talking about the wedding, I don't know if it was, like, it's weird because it's, like, as a man, you're, like, if your mind is, if once you're moving in a certain habit, your mind always goes to flirting mm -hmm. right away. So for me... No matter how nice I would be, it always turned into like flirting somehow. And then I would cross the line with women and I would let it run on. And then it would start to talk about the past. And then you start to talk about, well, we might have to do it one more time before I come a married man, you know? And, and it's just, I look back, I'm like, damn, what, like, who was I? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the fact that I thought it was okay to talk to women about, you know what I'm saying? Let's, like, oh, well, Leanne might not know, or let's do this really quick before I become married. Um, it's like, that's why I was like, I need to go see help and figure out why I did this. Like, why did I think it was okay in the moment? And so like when we split up, I went and talked to um, different people like Tony Gaskins and other people who had been married and dealt with situations and be like, yo, like I was dealing with some insecurities that I had no idea I was dealing with, that I needed the boosting of my ego from other women, even though I was getting everything I thought I needed at home, by having other women make me feel secure like I could sleep with them was doing something for my ego yeah. you know what I mean and, and it was because I was ultimately dealing with brokenness from childhood that I had no idea I was dealing with um, you know dealing with issues from my father dealing with issues um, you know like she said there was a moment where like my work was kind of slow and 
and I wasn't getting work and I was feeling kind of invalid. Leanne was doing a lot mm -hmm. and I was kind of just sitting here wondering what was going on in my life. And I feel like the, the pat on the back from women that I was getting was kind of making me feel like a man again, you know? Yeah. And, and it was stuff that I didn't even realize I was doing and habits that I was, that I was always doing. Even in my early relationships, like I had to look back and like, damn, well, the, the times that I messed up on my girl, she was taking care of me. And it was like a weird invalidness that I had as a man. And so by other women making me feel good and boosting me up made me feel like a man again. Yeah. Um, and so it was these little things where it's like, I didn't even know I was moving in this pattern, doing these things. And, and then also, you know, like putting myself in situations like, why do I need to have a homegirl that I'm talking to at night? There's no reason to have a homegirl that I need to be talking to at night. Right. Like if I need to, that communication, I should be having that with my girl. Right. You know what I mean? But these were things that I didn't realize even that I had to really think about. Um, so it, it was work that I never did that in this moment, that's why when we split up and I, instead of like, when we split up, I was like, all of my boys were hitting me like, man, you single now, let's go out, mm -hmm. let's do this. And I was like, no, I need to reflect on why I keep doing the same things. Like why, like why as a man, I feel like it's okay to do that yeah. and then leave this relationship and go out and, and just start flirting with new girls or try to get into a new relationship. Like, no, because if I get into a relationship, I'm just gonna do the same thing. Correct. I'm gonna start flirting with girls on the side and not give my woman my full undivided attention. Um, so for me, I was like, I need to sit down and figure out what that was and why I was doing that. Because in the moment, yeah, you're like, this is wrong. I shouldn't be texting this girl. I shouldn't be talking about sleeping with her. Um, and it's crazy because I always look back to my father. Like my father was a, addicted to drugs. He was addicted to crack. And he'd always like, he would get high. And then he'd always hit me up the next day and be like, son, I messed up. Like, I shouldn't have did that. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm not going to do it again. And then he would do it again. And he would feel horrible in the moment. And he would, and it's like this, like when you're in the moment, you know, it's not right. But until you break that habit and those patterns, you're just going to keep doing it. And so for me, it was a pattern that I didn't realize. And in the moment, it's like, damn, I shouldn't be texting this girl, but fuck it, I'm here now. So let's see where this conversation goes. And so um, it, for me, it was really healing to have lost Leanne and be in that pain and sit and make myself sit in that pain. Good. You deserve to suffer. I had to, I had to suffer in this bad. Yo, as much... Like as much as it hurt and I would be calling my boys crying, facing tears like a little baby, but I had to sit in that pain and force myself to figure out, you know, the, the root of it. Um, so I want to acknowledge that I in the Spicy Life program, I gave them a spicy assessment where I measure self-awareness, passion, intimacy, communication and learning to say yes. Yes to the universe. Yes to your partner. Yes to limiting beliefs. Um, and removing those. And one thing that I picked up on that was huge um, when I measured you guys on communication was the differences in your guys' upbringing from your family and childhood. You came from a two-parent home where parents are still together. You saw them um, work through conflict. You saw your um, and have a very close relationship with your father that is extremely emotionally available to you. And you are daddy's little girl often hear <laughs> you say you guys are like this. Um, Don's scores were very different from yours. Okay, I'm just gonna be honest, Leanne scored very high on a lot of things. Yeah. Don's was like, nope, didn't have that. Nope, didn't have that. Nope, we didn't have any. Nope, parents weren't there. Um, your mom was, but you grew up a single parent home. And so you didn't really see the conflict resolution. You didn't see um, a man process his emotions in a healthy way and then talk about it with his partner. You didn't see how he handled grief or um, depression or the things that, you know, you saw it in an unhealthy way. And so when you come from that dynamic where two people come together with very different backgrounds and experiences, and you're hoping that this person is just going to rise to the occasion and love you the way that you deserve and the love that you grew up with and that you know, it sometimes can be a hard crash or devastating mm -hmm. when those expectations aren't met. No, and this is not to excuse Don's behavior. This is for you guys to acknowledge that if you come from a home where maybe your parents weren't whole and they didn't teach you how to be in a loving, healthy relationship, maybe you need to take a pause and a beat and go through the process of what Don did of like, why am I broken? Why am I hurting other people? Oh, it's because I'm hurting. 
Um, and I just, I hear you and I acknowledge and just want to, you know, round of applause because this is very hard for people to come to the realization of. Most people go their whole lives without acknowledging these things. Mm -hmm. So, Don, what advice do you have for these men that are out here cheating like crazy? And women too, women cheat also, because I do get those, <laughs> those couples that come in and he's like, she cheated on me like crazy. Yeah. For cheaters, period, what would you say to them? What advice would you give to them as far as these indiscretions or these bad patterns? Um, ultimately, I think you gotta ask, sit and ask yourself why. Because you never, I feel like men, we don't ask ourselves why. A lot, a lot of times, like when I talk to men now, they're like, oh, well, you know, I just do it because I'm bored or I do it because I see my dad doing it. He got away with it. Or, you know, my boys give me a pat on the back for how many girlfriends I could have. Um, so it's like, what is Why are you doing it? And wh where is it coming from? And, and why do you need it? Like, what fulfillment do you get mm -hmm. afterwards? Um, because once you sit down and think about it, the fulfillment that you're getting is I read this book and it talks about like, it's like once you get a little bit of pleasure, it's like you keep needing more and more and more and more. It's like once you eat some chocolate, you know, it's like you, <laughs> now I need more chocolate. Right. It's the same thing. It's like you're feeding this, you're feeding your flesh. And so it's like, but once you like program your mind and you start to focus on what you're getting from it, I feel like that's when you can really be like, you're right. I don't need, all I need is one woman. Like I'm getting set, like, yeah. I was a young single man. It was cool to like experience different women, but the cheating aspect is like, why are you cheating? What are you gaining from it? What void is it filling yep. inside of you? And I feel like most of the times as men, we don't even realize. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's weird because as men, as boys, compared to women, like as boys, we're usually taught to have as many girlfriends as possible. And we're like, yo, like how many girls you got? You know, like my, my dad would pat me on the back, like, yo, you got a few girlfriends? And then all of a sudden, we're supposed to get in a relationship and then just know how to turn that off yeah. and be focused on one woman as to where a woman, like, I feel like since kids, y'all are like, hold out till you find the right man and be with your one man. And so you guys are already programmed to just be with one partner as yeah. to where men, we have to all of a sudden turn it off once we find that one woman, but nobody ever teaches us how to turn that off. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, so as a man, you have to start being more aware and learn how to turn it off for yourself and be like, okay, I'm with one woman, this is what I have to do now, I have to be disciplined. And you learn that once you're disciplined in that one category, everything else kind of starts to fall into place too. Like if you, a lot of times, if you look around and, you're, and your work isn't going right or you know different things aren't going right, and then it, sometimes it comes back to because you're not disciplined in your relationship. Yep. Um, which is why I feel like they say like, what do they say, like some of the most powerful men are like, married, faithful, yeah. you know, because they're focused on their one woman yeah. and now they can focus, <laughs> they're focused on their woman and now they can focus on what they got to do yep. to build the rest of the world around them the right way. You guys are more successful. You live longer when you have the right woman. Yeah. You have a legacy. Like, mm -hmm. so <laughs> we help you in so I many ways. I think that's the biggest <laughs> thing is like being aware of your mindset and why are you doing it and realizing that you don't need to do it. Um, but, ch but turning that off, knowing to turn that off, like, okay, it's a new phase of life now. I'm not this kid running around sleeping with everybody free willy like I'm turning that off I'm going to a new phase of my life how did you turn it off so walk us through pretty much what your personal healing process was for me ultimately it was first figuring out like what was going on and I realized like I was dealing with some insecurities from not having my father around um, and I always wanted like that approval that pat on the back I remember as a young kid like when everyone come to my games and as I got older, like my mother was very supportive, but I still was missing a little bit of, you know, love. And then, so as I got older and being in the entertainment industry and hearing no, no so much and getting shut down was a confidence breaker. And then I found myself constantly going through these levels where I was eager for like that sense of approval. And then I was starting to get it from women. And then my, you know, as a, as a young man sleeping with women and feeling that pleasure and then, you know, sleeping with different women and getting that sense of pleasure and all that kind of compiling, um, it just turns in a pattern. And for me, um, I had to, once I stepped back and was like, well, what am I doing that's unhealthy patterns, you know, and it's going to the club all the time, drinking, being around women, 
hanging out with a bunch of single guys that their focus is getting women. And so now I'm hanging around with them. I'm in the club. I'm watching, you know, uh, a bunch of sexual. I'm watching pornography, the music that I'm listening to. I'm drinking. Like all of these things were unhealthy for me as a person. And so I was like, I need to cut out these things. I need to like start working on wording, like affirmations so that I'm now aware. So for me, like even as simple as if a woman walks in the room and you know, she, her breasts are out and her ass is out, as a man, I'm gonna look at her, but then it's like catching yourself, a little, well, why? Why am I looking at her? Do I wanna sleep with this woman? Okay, and what's gonna happen after I sleep with her? Then what's gonna happen? I, I'm gonna get a little bit of pleasure. It, it's gonna break up my happy home. You know what I'm saying? And so it's, it's mind work. For me, it's all about mind work because once you start to do mind work, now you're aware. And I feel like a lot of times we just aren't aware. Like we're just moving and have it. So for me, it's mind work. It's catching my thoughts and, and changing those thoughts. And now if a thought comes in my mind, I can catch it because I'm aware. And I think that's so different from your original mindset where you can now acknowledge but for weren't sure. in the moment realizing like I have these voids, these things that are unfulfilled in my life, right? Yeah. And then you also were avoidant of mm -hmm. facing those demons. Yeah. And then in addition to that, you know, you're feeding your flesh instead of feeding your spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you were also making excuses with, you know, well, women and having as much as you can consume or the, you know, or the spice in your life, the variety, which right. is not actually spicy, right. um, but variety does feel good. Like that's a very like fleshly mm -hmm. desire, but it's not an excuse. Us as humans need to operate from self-control or we're no different from animals. Right. And so I think you acknowledging and saying like, okay, these are all the things that I was doing wrong. And you took a beat. You didn't go straight to like, Parting again, you were like, dang, I lost the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Now I want to hear how you got it back. Yeah. What the hell did you do? Because right. people want to know, like, people were like, how did y'all make this work? Because you even said, Leanne, earlier that you would never take someone back who cheated on you. Yeah. What did he do to earn you back? Because you were, so, you cut him off 100%. Like, yeah. and listening to him now, like, it sounds beautiful. But in that moment, yeah. you probably were like, F this dude, you know, never again. Like, right. did we block and delete and like fully close him? Like what was some of that letting go process and then that welcoming back process? What did that look like? So letting go, um, it's so easy for me to walk away when I know it's not serving me. So I literally cut everything off. I blocked him. I told my parents like, don't don't talk to him. You guys can have your relationship. Because one thing, my parents look at Don as a son. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to ever be in the position to say, you can't talk to him. Mm -hmm. And I could, but I care about my parents and their happiness too. And if they want to have a friendship, they can, but not around me. Like, please don't bring him around me. The connection has to be completely cut off from me and Don. And it was really hard because I was really close to his mother too. She was my best friend and it was really hard and tough to just completely change the entire like family dynamic of yeah. having family because we're so close to our family. And so the holidays were coming up and having the, the tradition of being together, it was so weird, you know, to have to just really look at this new life without him because I was so used to him preparing a whole life with him. It was just already just a plan. And then seeing that I have to let him go, especially through quarantine was honestly the hardest because I could not travel. Yeah. I couldn't well, go I out with my girls and I was so ready. <laughs> I was Alyssa, ready. She was traveling. I, one place, right Don, I wasn't it, traveling everywhere. And I said a prayer, I said, Lord, <laughs> I said, I don't know what you gotta do, but don't let her travel no more. And then quarantine happened, I was like, Thank you. No. I was like, yeah, if I got to stay in, she got to stay in. <laughs> I was like, if everybody in the world, I'm sorry, everybody in the world, I said that prayer. I didn't know it was going to affect everybody. Tell the truth. Did you start dating other people right afterwards? No. Honestly, I was like, everybody has COVID. Don't talk to me. I, I like did not like men. I was so over it. I just wanted to separate myself from relationships. I didn't even want to think of a relationship. I just wanted to be with my family and my friends. And like... I love being surrounded by my family and friends, so I really took time with my family. And then I was about, I was going, I went to Mexico with my girls, and then that's right. when COVID you happened. You immerse yourself with loved ones. Yes, but COVID happened, and we all got back, and especially just having to quarantine and just not be around people, like, that's when it was really hard. 
because I had to separate myself and I had to sit with my feelings and I had to reflect on everything that was happening. And Don was trying to talk to me also in the beginning of you know quarantine. And it was so hard to say no and just separate and really reflect and do what's best for me because especially when you're used to being with someone every yeah. night, it's so weird and cold in the bed. Like it's just such a weird adjustment. But I knew I loved me more than being in a situation that was not for me. So just really focusing on the self-love really helped me stay strong. And also my sister, Melissa, mm -hmm. at the time was going through a divorce. So we were doing this together, which was also a really big help for me. And just surrounding myself again with the people that I love, focusing on the exciting things that I have planned for the future, knowing that God's plan is greater than mine and knowing that everything happens for a reason. My faith was also um, so strong and what really helped me through this breakup was my relationship with God and really focusing on my self-love and taking the time to really sit with my feelings and accept what the truth was and you know it was so hard too because my parents were also going through a little depression from the not being able to travel and do anything too so we were all in the house just like upset about a lot of things but then that was when also I started writing my um, affirmations yes. with my dad so that journal was what inspired it the, the inspo the from behind it I'm like it's so beautiful but this came from look what grew from so, something that had to die it started with just a notebook with my family i said listen we're all depressed in this house we need to change our mindset because all of us are getting so upset so we need to write down a few things that we're grateful grateful for every day pray and talk about the amazing things that we have what we're grateful for and then it started changing our outlook on everything. My dad was getting happier because they were going through a depression and my sister was, you know, of course she's going through a divorce. We're all going through something. So writing affirmations and manifesting and really focusing on the, the things that we have and just thinking about the future rather than the things that we're just struggling with, yeah. we had to just push through. And that's what inspired me to do this one. And I said, it was so powerful for me and my family. I have to share this with my followers because I never wrote in journals. I didn't, I wasn't a journal writer. Like it wasn't my thing, which is why I made such a simple journal of what helped me so I'm just so grateful honestly that I learned and experienced the experiences that I've gone through with Don because it really helped my family we, we went got stronger we learned a lot about ourselves and growth and just through that time of oh sorry well no I was gonna say you're not the only one who wrote a book though during this oh, breakup yeah, so, <laughs> so through this time of doing this I get a phone call um pretty much from so our pretty much so no, pretty much what happened. <laughs> Go ahead. So what happened is when, so a little bit about manifestation is crazy because we were both, like we both went to God and we went to like manifesting and changing our mindsets. And mm -hmm. so when I was sitting in my mom's house and she was not talking to me no more, and I was like, okay, I really have to live with the fact that she might be done with me. But I was, I was like watching a bunch of videos on like manifesting and, and getting the life you want. Um, and I was like, cause I was like, yo, I need to, I want Leanne to come back in my life, but at the right moment. And so I was like watching videos and it was like, write out like the things you want, put like a time frame on them, right. Of, of what you want in your life and the things will start to happen. And so I, um, so I was talking to like my life coaches and I had in my life coach, Tony Gaskins, and he was telling me like, you should write your book mm -hmm. and like tell your story, um, for the young men and that because you see, you see celebrities break up, you see men cheat and then they break up and you never hear what happened or what led to the cheating or how these men, did they fix themselves or did they just move into a new relationship? And so he was like, you should write your book and tell your story of how you, you know, your generational curses you had to overcome, my truth, um, bestseller. <laughs> so I wrote this book to, you know, tell my story of what led me to this breakup and and the steps that I learned from men that have been through it and what they did to overcome it and the steps that I was now taking to overcome these. Because me as a man, I'm like, well, where do I start? I don't know any men who have cheated and just stopped or overcame this. So where do I start? So I went and found the knowledge and I put knowledge in a book for other people that are searching for it. Um, and so while writing this, I was writing out my goals. And one of the things was to have my best-selling book. Another thing was to do, get this movie sold that, that I was working on. But another one was to bring Leanne into my life somehow. Ooh. By this date, I wrote like a date, right, on the paper. And so I write a date down. This was like, we haven't spoke now for like three or four months. It was like four months. And 
So I'm like, Leanne's gonna get in touch with me by whatever, it was around my birthday. And all of a sudden, I left the dogs at her house, our dogs that we had. And so, I swear this is a true story. It's like, I think it's like the week of when I wrote this and her mother calls me and she's like, hey, one of the dogs is really sick. We can't take him to the vet because it's COVID. Could you come get the dog? And so I was like, oh, this is my sign. Like we're Leanne, they're gonna get in touch with me. And so I, um, so I was like, yeah, I'll take the dog. So I went over to the house uh, and, and to get the dog and I went and picked the dog up. And when I brought the, bag, the dog back, Leanne was in the kitchen and I was like sweating. I was nervous as hell. I was like, <sighs> she's there. And I was like, like, you know, nervously like, hey, you look good. <laughs> you know, um, you know, like, damn, I haven't like she blocked me. I haven't spoken to her, but. I was like, it, this was a little sign from the universe, like, you know, for me to show her that I'm doing good and I let her know, like, I'm doing good. Uh, I, oh, I was like, I'm writing a book and I kind of asked for her piece, like, yo, I'm mentioning our breakup and what happened and how it kind of helped me go through this journey that I'm on right now. And is it cool if I mention our relationship and the breakup? And she gave her OK. And she's like, yeah, that's fine. Um, so that was kind of like the first time that we kind of spoke. And then I finished the book like the next month um, and I had reached back out and I was like, hey, I finished the book. I'm doing a book launch. I would love for you and the family to come out um, and just if, be there if possible. And so that's kind of what opened the door right. to us speaking again on a friend level. Um, and also you had spoke to because Tony Gaskins. So that's was the phone call that I got. So the phone yeah. call was from Tony. And Tony was checking on me, and then he also brought up, like, hey, by the way, Don's writing a book, and you're in it, just letting you know. But from my perspective, like, he's been really working on himself, and he'll tell me the truth, because he's been in our relationship since the beginning. And so I trust his advice. Like, everything that he says, I really value his advice and everything. So when he says something like, oh, yeah, Don's working on himself, I'm like, that's, that's good. You yeah. know, I'm happy for him. But I really didn't see myself getting back with him still. I was still, like, I wasn't mad at him. I was just, like, moving on. Like, I forgive you. I'm out. Like, I'm not going to go back to this. There's no point. And hearing from, my, from uh, Tony... And just hearing like the positive things that he was saying about Don, it just, you know, it did make me kind of happy for him. But then like I was already in a place where I'm moving on. So when he had asked um, if when Don asked me, can like I, I put the book out? It's about you. I said, that's fine. As long as it's not quoting anything that I'm saying, it's all you. That's fine. Because I don't want to have to do a YouTube video like, hey, page 13 <laughs> is wrong. I did not say that. <laughs> but it's and, more so like one chapter. Yeah. That really and it's down. like literally detail. So when the book was done, Don had sent it to us and I read it in like two, three days and I cried and I was just so impressed. Like, you know, he really is putting in the work. He's really opening up and just really becoming a man about the situation. He's, he didn't turn to alcohol. He didn't turn to girls. He didn't turn to just the negative things. He really made a change. And so that's when I saw the growth and it's just, you know, I was just like, okay, well, I'm happy for him. And you know, I'm a very forgiving person, but I don't forget the things that someone has done to me. But at the same time, I don't hold it against them. You know, I'm, I congratulate and I was happy for him. And when my parents were saying, Leanne, please, can we just go stop by for the book launch? All of your friends are going to be there, too, because we share the same friends. And it was already like really, when was that? I'm around it was July. July of 20. Yeah, so it was already months has passed. I already had launched like a YouTube video talking like about the breakup. Six, I had my closure and Don was respecting my space and I was able to, you know, focus on my healing and self-love. So I was at a better mind, like a mindset. I wasn't bitter towards Don. Um, but so we went to the book launch and, you know, seeing Don and he had this whole speech that he was like holding in his tears and Everyone was just listening and it was just like, it was a, an amazing heartfelt speech. And for a man to stand up in front of everyone and to admit his wrongs and to really show the world that he's like, listen, I did this, but I want to fix it and I want to be a better person. And I'm not going to let my past hold me back to becoming the man that, I, that God has for me to be. So I was proud of him. And then like after that, I knew Don was like, 
you know, reaching out a little more like, hey, how are you? I just wanted to say, you know, I'm really thankful that you came to the book launch. And, you know, if we can all hang out again. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Hang out again. And so I, <laughs> I was like, I knew this was going to happen eventually. But I, you know, I was open to hanging out if it was in a group setting like that, because we did. All of our friends were there. My family was there. It was very, like, it was peaceful. It was fun. And it was respectful. I didn't feel... Um, like uncomfortable at all so I said if it's gonna be ever us hanging out it's gonna be in group settings so like certain like situations like you know all of us getting together to shoot content or whatever it was he was around with all my friends so it took a while to finally say okay we can like finally have one-on-one -on -one. but it, it took a it, while yeah, because then like there. I think that was around the time of the like the protest and then we started protesting together, yeah we right? protest yeah right. he showed so you up found, you found a like we found ways to do things common together. Thing, like common and, interest. Because I told, I told her, to I said, together. like in my mindset, I was like, my goal ultimately is I always wanted to be with her. But ultimately, I was like, well, I don't want to lose that friendship either, you know, because we had that friendship. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I told her, I was like, can we, let's just like focus on building a friendship again, you know, and let's not try to force us. Mm -hmm. And let me just, let me just be your friend. And because we're all around each other and I want us to be cool. And then, um, and I was like, then maybe I could take you on a date. You know? <laughs> maybe I could take you on a date again. <laughs> but the thing is, the difference from before to then, like from when we broke up to the time after the book launch and everything, I didn't feel the desperation that he had. Mm. I felt the growth and the mature dawn and just like, let's just be friends. And I felt that it, I felt comfortable to be able to hang out. You know, Was there a recording process? So you courted the first time to get her heart. The second time after you established the friendship, where's it, was this, there a period where you started to court again? Where you were taking her out doing on like dates, nice doing yeah. sweet things, mm -hmm. feeling, you know, feeding her love languages. Mm -hmm. Did you start through that process again? Yeah, so um, I think I like would show up with some flowers, you know, bring her flowers or have some flowers sent to her. Um, like show up with like... letters? He mails me letters? I would like send her like okay. little... I would send her like some <laughs> letters. Uh, get like get some of her favorite food like delivered to her just like I, tr I would try to do more thoughtful things um, but for me my mindset now compared to before like before it was like let me do something to try to get her back or do something to make her feel good but now my mindset was like let me do something to kind of create a new habit in my life like this is something that she says she likes so let me kind of create like a new habit of doing thoughtful things for her, you know, and hopefully if we do grow and get back together, I'll, I've now implemented this new habit to where I'm just, when I'm out, I think to grab something nice for her because I know that one little thing, you know, might, well, might brighten up her week. As of before, I wasn't doing thoughtful things like that. Okay, Don, so it sounds like you did a lot of things to try to, you know, get pretty much like reprogramming of your mindset showing her showing up um you put a lot of like things out there in the universe you were manifesting yeah. <laughs> but how did you get leanne to take you back and then say yes because you guys just had a very public another one yeah. engagement how did you get to that point how did you get her to say you back yes to you because a lot of people and even in leanne's mind she was saying no 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 yeah. how did you get her to say yes this time so once we got back once we like started dating again um of course we were like we were talking and we we're like, well, we were planning on getting married. Like, where, where do we stand right now? You know, like when you get back together from being engaged, like, do we start over? Are we engaged again? Like, what's the process, process yeah. from here? You know, and I told her, I was like, well, I feel like I'm a new man. So I, I kind of want to do things all over again. You know, I want to kind of maybe rush the process i do want to marry you soon but like <laughs> but i still want to take like new steps you know like let's date and then let me repropose i want to get a new ring for you like i want it to feel right like i don't want you to have any doubts on if i'm the right man that you're marrying and i want to show you now that i've put this work in and i am the new man so i was like let like i told her i was like i want to repropose to you and she's like okay um and so we talked about it and we were talking about planning a wedding and we were like, well, I, I do want to get married soon. And we talked about all these things. So for me, I was like, I want this proposal that I do to be special. I want to make sure I get her a nice ring. Like the ring got to be crazy because I like the first ring, but 
This one gotta be way crazier right. than the first ring. New man, new ring. Um, I want, <laughs> you know, and I want, I wanted like the location to just be perfect. And so it's crazy because I had been doing so much manifesting. I had this script for a film that I had been trying to get sold for the past three, four years, and I finally got it sold. And so my team, they were like, we're gonna be shooting in Dubai. And so in my mind, I was like, it would be the perfect thing to propose to her in Dubai doing my film yeah. and so um it just like lined up perfectly um and so to get her to say yes i mean we were at a stage when i reproposed that i i wasn't i didn't think she was gonna say no <laughs> you're confident i was confident that it was gonna be a yes um but i just wanted her to know and be confident now that that like before when she said she had those little doubts of my flirtation and was I really ready or was I, you know, was I still worried about other females? I wanted her to know now that this is it, me and you. This is like, I'm all about you. This is a man you're getting. Um, and I wanted that to be vocalized and, and her to understand that. And so um, it's gonna be work. It's like you said, it's gonna be constant work and constant reminders. And she's gonna wake up some days, maybe still doubting it. Mm -hmm and wondering why she gave me another chance or why she's back with me. And it's gonna be my job to reassure her and remind her and let her know like this ring isn't just a ring. Um, you know, not too many people get second proposals, but, <laughs> but you know, like, but I look at this as like, now I can finally, I finally have an understanding of what it means to be all in and be proposing and ready to be just locked in with just you, you know, um, and so, it signifies like me really willing to put all that work in because me being the one that hurt her, yeah. I have a lot of work to do. I have to be able to constantly set my pride and ego aside as a man and be ready and willing to nurture and, and let my soft side show and, and let her scream and yell at me sometimes and just sit back and take it. <laughs> you know, I ha this is something that when I went into it, I was like, these are the steps that I'm going to have to do if I'm coming back from breaking her heart. I'm going to have to be okay with all of this as a man. Yeah. Um, and this was stuff that some men were like, bro, you tripping? Like, that's whack. Why are you doing that? But the right men in my life were like, that's what a real man does. You know, that's what a real man should do. Yeah. Um, and so I took the, I've been taking advice from the real men in my life. Not knocking like other men. It's just, you have to reach this level. And talking to a lot of men, we're not taught this stuff. Right. And we don't have enough men in our life that are willing to speak on, up on it because they're like, oh, that's soft. Or, you know, you're, you're soft if you show that side of you. And there's not enough men that are like, no, be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Let that soft side show, like, you know? And so that's kind of where I'm at is like, I feel like our relationship and where we're at, I can be that voice for men. And, and try to give that advice and hope that it saves a couple men out here. And I've witnessed it. I've witnessed it. We meet weekly in our sessions, right? You guys are coming with your homework done because I give you guys a lot. Um, you guys are calling me even when we're not yeah, in our so session. Small. I'm on set reading lines for my movie over here and I'm like, assessment, okay, uh, do this, okay, lines, assessment. <laughs> but I can see when you guys come into our sessions that you guys have like actually talked about the things and taken the tools that I've given you and applied them when you're not even with me, right? You're not just showing up for the sessions and you're like, okay, Spicy, we're just gonna appease you for right now because it's not about me. It's about you guys. And when I see that not only can you articulate an understanding of the information that I'm giving, but then seeing the change in the dynamic of how you guys communicate together in our sessions even, and how you process information, I'm like, okay, they're, they're getting it. Where were you guys at when you decided, like what state in your relationship were you guys at when you decided to take it to the next level and come to the spicy life? Well, you know, it's crazy because when I, uh, when we separated, like I never had thought about seeking counseling or anything before, but when we separated, I was talking to a life coach, I was taking therapy, and it felt so good to have someone to talk to. Then when we got back together, um, I had kind of talked to her about it. And then a friend of ours mentioned you mm -hmm. and it was like the perfect time because we were finally like opening up to us being able to talk to somebody um 
and, and, and get that counseling for our relationship and be like, okay, we need this before we go into, into mm -hmm. marriage. Like this is something that we absolutely need because we don't know how to, like, we don't know how to um, heal these, these broken pieces by ourselves. We need somebody from the outside that can help us. So like we, I've always been seeking guidance. You know, I had Tony Gaskins. He's always been there on call whenever I needed him and my friends and my parents. And, you know, I felt like if I'm going to go into marriage, I just want to be 150 percent sure that this is going to be the man and I'm going to be confident walking down the aisle and also healing and growing in our, my trust with Don. And I think that was that was the biggest challenge for me was trust because when you experience infidelity, it does something to a woman and it makes a woman, if a woman's not mentally strong, they're going to question their themselves yep. and then they're going to wonder if it's them. And it's not even that. It could be in so, some cases, but in my case, I knew I was giving my best foot forward for Dawn and trying to be the best woman I can be. But also there may be things that I'm unaware of that I may be carrying from my past. And I know if I'm going to step into this marriage life and I want to have a relationship like my mom and dad, I want to be ready. I have two amazing, beautiful sisters that have been so supportive, but they've gone through two divorces and me watching them go through divorces. And it's just the most stressful time consuming thing and I didn't realize how long it took to change the last name back like it's so much work <laughs> and like I don't want to have to deal with this like let's really figure out if I want to do this work so you know and I knew that counseling was something that I wanted to do but at first I was a bit um like I don't need counseling counseling's for people that are just like you need it you know it was just not I wasn't open to it yet I was a bit still like not like I wasn't motivated to do it just yet. I wanted Don to make sure he was doing all the things that he needed to. But then I realized, you know what? My friend's telling me about you and how much it's helping her. And I'm like, I want to, you know, I'm going to be open to it. I really want to try and see if this is something that would help me because Tony's helping me. But counseling is, of course, work also with this person. If Don is willing to do the work with me, it's also going to give me a sense of security knowing that, okay, I'm not in this by myself. Teamwork. So once I opened up the idea of like, let's do this, let's make this phone call, because it was so hard to find somebody that we felt comfortable with. Um, and, and I've talked to a few different therapists and I just didn't feel like I had this connection with them. I wasn't really feeling like a good vibe of just feeling that me and Donald do well with this. Like I didn't know and it was expensive. I'm like, are we wasting money? Like, right. but it's like, you pay for the counselor, you pay for a divorce later, you choose, right. you know, so. <laughs> I met, it didn't even take me long. I, we had our first consultation and I was so excited. I'm like, I love her. She's amazing. I already can feel all of the things that she's just dropping these gems. I'm just absorbing everything. Like it, I didn't realize it was everything I needed and everything that would help me and Dawn set our relationship up for success. And I never felt so excited about working on like work with Don, like paperwork and really investing our time hours into our sessions. Yeah. We're spending like we, we get on seven and I'm like, what time is it? It's like almost midnight. I'm like, oh my God, we're talking for hours. But it's just such an amazing thing to do with your partner, even for by yourself. I think that if I knew about this sooner, I would have been counseling on my own so that I can attract my purpose mate you know what she taught me purpose mate <laughs> and also the partner I feel like it, it's amazing because like the communication yeah. like when it's just uh, when it's just you and your partner like you have your opinion they have their opinion how do y'all come to a middle ground it's hard to just do that by yourself but when you have someone like yourself there with us yeah. that yeah. I can voice my side she can voice her side right. And then you can help us kind of find that middle ground. And it's not like we're pointing fingers at each other. Right. And she's not going to get angry at me saying how I feel in the situation. I'm not going to get mad at her. Yeah. Like having that help, it makes it makes things so much easier. Um, you know, and then it's like if we have a like when we have a bad week, like, all right, what happened this week? And yeah. we can go through and talk, talk about, about it, it. Yeah. figure out what the root was of it. How do we make sure it doesn't happen next time? Right. So being able to like break things down, it's like the work makes it fun, you know, because it's like, That's and it's like we're, we had to do something together now and it like, it spices the spicy life, it spices right. our life back up because <laughs> now we're excited with each other That's and you know. Right. <laughs> I think it's so important when you have 
something like that with your partner where you actually work on these problems, even the problems that we may not be facing now, because we're talking about our three month goal, our one year goal, yeah. our three, three year, year goal, goal, our lifetime life. goal. Very so she has us <laughs> making a vision board of what we see and making sure that our visions are you know, together. You know, so I know that Don knows this is what I want and I know that's what he wants and we can tackle all of these things now because later on if we get faced with a problem, we know how to handle it, right. we know we can come to agreement with this and and of course, especially about communication, like what I've learned, what I love about you is that you know how to dissect something and explain it so it's like everyone can understand. Literally like you know the ingredients <laughs> to everything, the trust formula, the communi communication formula. So even for like when Don coming from like a man's perspective, he can really understand. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I feel like a woman can understand a lot more easier because yeah. we're so used to talking about our emotions and our feelings. Oh, God, yeah. And guys sometimes don't even feel comfortable talking about it because it's a sign of weakness or it's weird or I don't know if, you know, I feel comfortable talking about my feelings because I was taught to not to. So. It allowed us to open up and also hear from another person. Like Don said, it's different from hearing it from her rather than your sister or your brother or your mom. It's just different. And we don't feel like you're picking sides. Yeah. And you check us like, oh, Leanne, that wasn't right. What is the right way to do it? And you've always given us a solution to the problem. So I'm just so grateful. Like this experience and saying yes to the spicy life has definitely <laughs> changed my life and also my marriage <laughs> like we want. Right like here. it's so true. <laughs> and I've never felt so excited about getting married like before remember i was questioning yeah. like okay i guess this is how i feel i'm unsure we'll just you know dive in and see what happens i'm shooting in the dark but now like what you also taught me instead of falling in love or rising in love we're moving with purpose and really knowing what we're doing and whatever problem we face we know how to tackle it yeah. And I just feel so much more confident. And I think that's the most important part is feeling confident in the decisions that you make. And when you understand what the problems are and knowing the solution and the things that you can tackle together, now it's like we're unstoppable. Yep. Anything is possible after this. And that's the same thing with trust. You know, trust has been the biggest challenge for me. And Dawn's biggest challenge, I feel, is awareness and catering to my feelings and knowing how to communicate and give me that love and affection that I need. And, you know, it's just... It's been a really amazing journey in th just these last two months, but we've like really like did the homework and we enjoy it. You know, we look forward for it. our spicy calls and <laughs> we talk about it. And I'm like, don't make me call, don't make me have to call spicy. But what's funny, yeah, he's the one that like, calls yeah, I'm gonna spicy. Call spicy. <laughs> I will like, call spicy like, right, yo, Leanne. <laughs> I know it's that time of the month, but Leanne is tripping. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I will walk you guys through. I'm like, okay, what's going on, guys? Let's handle this. Um, yeah. And most people are afraid of that accountability, right? Like, they're like, I don't want to lean into this. Like, I'd rather my partner just forgive me. Like, right. And that's one of the things that I really commend you guys for. When you first came in, um, of course, the trust was a huge issue. But it was like, well, how do we rebuild this? Mm -hmm. And what we did were through healthy communication styles and habits, putting a process in play where you would share and inquire and respond in a way that affirmed one another. It became more about like listening to learn versus just like, you know, feeling like you were winning or that you were right. And both of you guys were both like, okay, I'm gonna put my ego aside, I'm gonna put my pride aside and do what's best for the greater good of the relationship mm -hmm. versus what serves me emotionally in this moment. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, and I recognize that and acknowledge like, gosh, this is a couple that I definitely wanna work with because I don't take everybody. But seeing your remorse, seeing that you were really like, Leanne, tell me every way in the book to fix it. What do you need from the, languages of forgiveness that I need to do in order to serve this relationship better. And Don was willing to take the feedback from you and you were willing to share with him, like not just, hey, I need you to um, be more thoughtful. You actually were willing to do what I asked of you and said, I'm like, Leanne, lay it out, give him specific directions. Like, let this person know how you need him to show up. Mm -hmm. And then Don was executing. I'm like, yeah, Don, did you do this funny. and this? Don did it. He didn't just want to be better. He was willing to be better for you. And you were open to the forgiveness. And you asked him, you're like, don't force the forgiveness on me. Let it be in my time. And he was willing to be patient with you. And that's one of the things that you ultimately need. In addition to seeing him battling those demons that he had and willing to do whatever it takes to help you battle yours. Some of them in which, you know, he created. 
So <laughs> taking accountability for that. And I think that's also what helped me trust, build the trust back is that I see Don doing the work. If, yeah. I, if, he didn't, if I noticed that he was slacking and didn't care, then I would question it. But for someone like Don to be, have the desire and be so motivated, it motivates me and it makes me feel more confident and secure. And, you know, it's, it's just been such an amazing journey so far, like seeing Don just transform to the man that I've always believed he could be, you know, so... Well, Spicy life is it, guys. This is their testimony, how <laughs> they were able to come back from the cheating, you guys. Um, I don't suggest everybody try this at home unless you guys are really willing to put in the work. And yeah, as and you can see, they did. For sure. We're not, like, over here, like, advocates of cheating. No. You know, like, no. I, like I, I feel like your past shouldn't always define you, but you can't. But you can't, all, you're not always gonna take somebody back for cheating on you, you know, like our situation may be different than somebody else's. Um, and you have to, they have to be willing to put the work in because every man, th there was multiple times where I would come back to Leanne after flirting with a girl or doing something stupid and I'd come running back and be like, baby, I'm sorry, uh, take me back, it won't happen again. Mm -hmm. But then I wouldn't put no work or do nothing to show that I'm changing myself. Mm -hmm. And so, whether it's the woman or the man, like ultimately they have to be willing to work on themselves and y'all have to really be like, okay, are we, are we really meant to be together or are we meant to be friends? You know what I mean? Like not everybody is meant to be. So we're not sitting up here like it's okay to cheat and, no. you know, go write a book and then you can have somebody back. Like that's not. And before you guys fell back madly in love with each other, you made sure to fall madly in love with yourself. That was the biggest thing. If y'all yes. aren't madly in love with yourself and your partner is not madly in love with himself, sure. you guys trying to make it work is going to be very challenging. Right. Yeah. But they put in the time. They put in the energy, the resources, and you can see like it's been a beautiful, beautiful, ugly, crazy journey, right? Because um, we would never wish any of the hardship upon you, but no. you guys were able to, you know, make something great from it. Right. And although you would, you know, never want to experience that type of hurt again, it's almost beautiful that you did because look at what came from it. Right. You guys were able to grow from it. For sure. And I, I mean, I totally agree. I think the number one thing is be, becoming whole like you're whole you love yourself and that's what you're going to attract because if you're single that's the number one thing you can't attract whole if you're not whole and if a person that is whole and you're not whole they're going to eventually be tired of trying to help you and all of these things like it's just you have to make sure you're whole and you're taking care of yourself your mind is right you're positioning yourself for the blessings and that's another thing i knew to observing don when things were just not working out for him when we were together before the infidelity like his career was like going down and like things weren't working out. And that's when his ego and everything, it just wasn't where he wanted it to be, My but he wasn't, broken. he wasn't positioning himself. So you're, he was blocking his own blessings. Yeah, he wasn't in so, alignment with the win. Mm -hmm. like, so once I win? noticed he shifted and really surrendered his life to God and really changed his life, I noticed everything was happening so fluently. Like it was perfect. Like opportunities were coming his movie got picked up like I seen what God was doing but he that's pretty much what I also see for myself like what keeps me doing the right thing is if I do this this could be blocking my blessing so I want to receive all the things that God has for me so I'm going to make sure I'm living right I'm being real and honest and loyal so that's why like things were flowing and flowing but when you're attached to someone that isn't aligned, there's gonna be problems, which is why we were facing all of these challenges. But now when he's now finally aligned, we're just cruising. You refocus your relationship you know, with God. We're, like, we're growing. <laughs> For real. But you know, it's always gonna be a challenge. But now when you like with spices, she's she gets us ready. We're like now suited and booted, ready to go into war. Yeah, the armor. Yes. There's always, there's always gonna be challenges. Always. But Even when you guys are married. Remember yeah. always, last it, night. Exactly. I know. <laughs> Once we get married, there's always gonna be new challenges. But but taking the right steps, like what we're doing, to be prepared. You know, like. You have yes. to, once you got to put the armor on so you're prepared for battle. Don't prepare, and we weren't taught to be prepared. It's just, it's like, all right, you get married and yeah, have kids. And we get, like, go out and lie what? And How do you do that? <laughs> you know, we got to, well, you and you prepare. know from what other people's experiences and their ways of showing the example, but, you know, again, we grew up so different. Yeah. 
So this whole breaking down everything and going to a counselor that you can talk about everything with is honestly the, the best decision you can do for yourself and for your relationship. I love it. Yeah. Love you guys. Love I'm you. so excited for you guys' upcoming wedding. It's going to be fabulous. You guys let everybody know where they can find you, where they can get the books. Yes. Um, to yes. Let everybody know your uh, social handles. So you can go to my Instagram and Twitter and also Facebook. All of my accounts are Leanne V. And to get this journal, you can go to Shop Leanne V. And also it's available on Amazon. But I would recommend Shop Leanne V because you can get a free pen with a little diamond on it and a signed copy. So yes, Leanne V everywhere. And then Shop Dash Leanne V for my journal. Don? At Don Benjamin everywhere. We have our Forever Us on Instagram and YouTube. That is all of our couple content. Mm -hmm. And my book, My Truth, is available on Amazon. It's available um, on all every book platform. But uh, whatever book platform you go on, it's available on there. My <laughs> Truth, get it for everybody in your family. Get a copy for everybody in your family. I love y'all, man, for sure. These are my, these are my copies. These, these are, are yours. These, these are, are for you. Those are your <laughs> you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at SpicyMati. Go to thespicylife.com. Make sure that you click and subscribe to The, the Spicy Life. Uh, share this episode with a friend. Also go to thespicylife.com for a free consultation. And we can potentially set up some sessions for you, get you enrolled in the Spicy Life program if you want to revive your love or potentially find your purpose mate. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy.